All right. Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Welcome to Sunday worship here at UPC. My goodness, last Sunday we got to hear from uh, Reverend Mark Laverton. Uh, my gosh, his connection and story with UPC was so long and deep. And uh, what a charge that he left for all of us. Um, I've thought about that a lot during the week. And so um, if you have a chance to, if you didn't get to uh, hear it, you can go online and find actually both sermons. Um, and then uh, if you did get a chance to hear it and want to hear it again, same place. Go to YouTube and you can find it. So here we are. It is Thanksgiving week. And so we've got an action-packed week that, uh, or season that begins this Wednesday with a Thanksgiving Eve service. It's here at UPC at 7 p.m. and it will also be hosted online. And so you can just click on the link like you always do, but it'll just be uh, Wednesday night at 7. And uh, now on, our Associate uh, Director of Worship will be leading that evening for us. The second thing is, is it also means that there is um, Kindred Adopt a Family is beginning. And so if you have a chance to go to the Kindred website and you want to adopt a little child or a young child or a, a mom or a dad for the season, um, feel free to sign up for that. And then the next thing you're going to want to put down is Christmas Eve. There are three services at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. And so now the last thing is please do fill out the Connect card. And the most important one, and I'm going to land with this, is prayer. I just had a, a friend come up and say, you know, can you just pray for me for energy today? And I thought that, you know, prayer is the most powerful and kind and loving thing that we can do for one another. And so if you would like prayer today, hit the prayer request button, and we'd love to pray with you in a chat room. Or you can send an email to prayer at upc.org, and that will be sent to our prayer team. And so with that, let's quiet our hearts and let's prepare for worship. And we will be ready to hear from Pastor Jill today. And so with that, let's join our friends in the sanctuary.
morning. There's an elephant in the room. Did you notice it? It's coming right down the aisle. It's the temperature. It's a little cold in here. And we realize that. We're working on it. We apologize. But the good news is that one of the best things you can do when you're chilly is to sing. And so we're going to get an opportunity to do that in just a moment. Our call to worship comes from, from Psalm 59 verses 16 and 17, which say, I will sing of your might. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. Oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you. For you, O oh God, are my fortress, my God who shows me steadfast love. And so we're going to open up by singing together. When morning gilds the skies, it's number 99 in your hymnals. I invite us to stand as we're able and let's sing together God's praises. Won't you join me this morning in the prayer of confession? Let us pray. Father, we come before you this morning knowing, Lord, that we are weak, but you are mighty. Knowing, dear God, that it was you that made us and not we ourselves. And so, Lord God, we come this morning uh, declaring our utter dependence on you, Lord God. We need you every second, every minute, Every hour of the day we need thee, O oh God. And Lord, we come to this sacred spot one more time, dear God, to acknowledge that all of us have sinned and fallen short of your glory, dear God. And so, Lord God, we come this morning, Lord, knowing that you are a forgiving God, knowing, dear God, that you are a God who can clean us up and gather us back together. And so, Lord God, we ask this morning that you would uh, search our hearts, search our minds, search every crack and crevice of our being. And if you find anything in us, Lord, that is unbecoming of your character, anything like sin, hate, jealousy, envy, strife, a lying tongue, a deceitful spirit, dear God, we ask that you would remove it away from us and cast it out into a sea of forgiveness, never to be seen of or heard of again. Lord God, we, we love you, Lord. Help us to love you today with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. Help us, Lord, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us, Lord God, to love our enemies, to bless them, to curse us, to do good to them that hate us, dear God. 
Help us, Lord, to love like you love. And so, Lord God, we pray that you would give us this morning a stillness of heart, a stillness of mind, that we may know that you are God. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you have done, what you're doing right now, and what you will do in the future. It's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us hear these words from, for our assurance of pardon. Psalm 51, 6 through 8. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Amen. Our salvation was so preciously purchased by Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, it says that he emptied himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And this hymn we're about to sing, which is at number 127 in our hymnals, says, talking about Jesus yielding his glory in his love's design that in our darkened hearts his grace might shine. Let's praise him for our salvation. I invite us again to stand as we sing all praise to Christ. Well, good morning. Yes, you're still here. Good. The heat is coming. I don't know if it'll come before we leave, but it is coming. Um, and you're always welcome to sit close to your neighbor if you feel comfortable. I'm Jennifer Kenny. I'm the Executive Director of Operations, and I want to welcome you to worship this morning here at University Presbyterian Church. I especially want to welcome you if you are new or visiting with us today. Um, after the service, there's a welcome gift for you back at the welcome table. Please come back and say hi. Um, the rest of us, I would invite us all to fill out a Connect card. Uh, they're in front of you in the pew rack, or you can scan the back of your bulletin, that little square, that QR code. You can do it electronically if you would like. That helps us know that you're here, and we'd love uh, to get to know you better. A special welcome to college students and young adults. Um, I don't know if they're here. We had a 
very large football game yesterday, not in Seattle, but I think a lot of our attention was uh, watching those Huskies uh, pull out a squeaker against the Beavers. That was kind of fun. Well, this week is Thanksgiving, and um, I'm excited, and I know you're probably looking forward to it as well. As we stand and get to know our neighbors, we're going to greet each other here in a second, why don't you tell your friend what your favorite Thanksgiving side dish is? So why don't you stand and greet one another this morning? Hi everybody, it's the greeting time. And so as they all uh, in the sanctuary greet one another, you know what? I didn't know that the heat wasn't on down there. I thought it was just me feeling a little chilly, but it is cold, I guess, in the sanctuary. So praise be that you are all at home. I hope that you have heat there. Um, and if you do, great. So jump into the chat and let's just keep greeting one another. It's so nice today to see so many people in here saying good morning. So thank you for that. Ooh, garlic. Okay, now I know what the question was. Your favorite Thanksgiving dish. So share that. I have so many. It's almost like turkey is just an afterthought for me. But anyway, so with that, let's jump in here. Share what you like for Thanksgiving. And um, I'm assuming that was the question. And we'll go back in the sanctuary where we will get together again and sing the doxology. At this time, we want to uh, welcome our children and middle schoolers to meet their leaders in the back for worship. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's give them a hand as they lead. Amen. It is time to uh, worship the Lord with our giving today. And giving is very easy here at UPC. Uh, you can go to upc.org slash give or after the service, you can put your offering in the silver box in the lobby or in the black boxes in the balcony. And uh, it's important that we give back to God a portion of that which he has given to us. Everything that God has blessed us with is not always for us. Uh, Sometimes God wants us to be a conduit of his blessing. And well, we want to thank you for continuing to give. We know that we're coming to the end of the year and uh, uh, year-end giving. So we invite you to, uh, to give that last extra push of money that we need to get over the hump as a church family and advance the kingdom of God. So we want to thank you for that. Uh, with that being said, we do want to also mention that... Uh, the Deacon Fund has given an extra $5,000 to, uh, to the uh, Israel and Palestine region, those who uh, need assistance. The, um, the Presbyterian uh, Association, Disaster Association, uh, we have given that money to them and we trust that they will handle that money correctly to meet the needs of those who are uh, in in the crossfires of this conflict between Palestine and uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters as well. So let's continue to lift them up. Uh, with that being said, let us pray. Father, we thank you for, uh, for blessing us to be a giving church. And uh, we thank you, dear God, for all of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord, we pray that you help us, Lord, to, uh, to be good stewards of all that you have given us, Lord God, may we withhold nothing from you, Lord, because you have, you have not withheld anything from us. And so, Lord God, we pray that you will bless the tithes and offerings that will be given, and may they 
uh, be blessed in such a way that it advances your kingdom and that it edifies your people and that your territory is enlarged, dear God, as we continue to move forward uh, to the greater reality of who you are and whose we are. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. May we hear a word from you this morning. Will you use me as your mouthpiece? Will you teach us something new about who you are or who we are in light of your kingdom? Speak to us with words or straight to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm Jill Brinkerhoff, and I'm the director of family ministries here at UPC. I moved to Seattle about five years ago to work here, and it's been a joy and a pleasure to work with all of you. Uh, My personal life has seen many ups and downs, Um, and as many of you know, both of my parents have passed away since I started working here and since I moved to Seattle. I moved from Southern California, and I have a younger brother. You can go ahead and show that family picture. That's my younger brother, Chad, my sister-in-law, Elizabeth, and Wyatt and Bentley, my nephews. I am so excited to see them on Wednesday. They'll be flying up here to spend Thanksgiving with me and some of our other family. And I get to fly down about four times a year and spend time with them. Um, They're my favorite. Well, I live alone in Kenmore, and on a Thursday in August, I invited two coworkers, Anna and Amani, to come and work with me from my house for the day. So we set up our laptops in my dining room, and we're doing work, and had some lunch together, and then we decided to take a break and take a little walk right outside of my house. I was wearing the same rainbow flip-flops I've worn a bajillion times, but somehow tripped immediately knew something was wrong with my ankle, fell to the ground, slamming my hands and my knees to the concrete, and just kind of writhed in pain and rolled over on my back and had to lay there for a second, and they're like, what just happened? I'm like, I don't know, but it hurts. Um, So they helped me kind of stand on my one good leg and supported me while I hopped back to my home and then up the stairs to the main level in my house that I could I had to kind of crawl up the stairs and then I knew something was wrong with my arm too and I sat on the floor and Imani got me ice for my ankle and Anna ran all around my house looking in all of my cupboards for bandages because my knee was bloody uh, and by that point my ankle was already the size of a golf ball and getting bigger swollen on the outside and I was like I think we need to go to urgent care And I had just moved to Kenmore. I had no idea where the urgent care was, so we looked it up. And they helped me get back down my stairs and into my car, and they drove me um, just a quarter mile away to this evergreen urgent care. They got me in, got me settled, and then they went and waited nearby at a coffee shop because it took a couple hours for all the x-rays and everything. Um, From urgent care, I'm texting some different people to tell them about my fall, including Jennifer, and she was still at work here, and she knew that the church has these great scooters. And right away, she loaded one into her car. She said, just in case. And I was like, well, I don't know if I need it yet, but thanks for doing that. Well, I had fractured my right ankle and my left elbow, and it was too painful to put any weight, even with the walking boot, on my foot. So I was wheeled in a wheelchair out to the car, and Anna and Amani drove me back to my house um, and kind of got me settled there on the couch. But after they left, I was like, well, I need to use the restroom, and it's way over there from the couch. How do I do that? I tried to hop, and even just tapping my toe down was just excruciating. Um, I needed to text Jennifer and say, actually, I will take you up on that. I do need help. I need you to bring the scooter. So that night, she brought the scooter. She 
it's pretty heavy, and carried it up my stairs for me so that I could have it on the main level where I have a powder room and my couch and kitchen, and got me settled again. Um, now, my aunt and uncle live out in Sammamish, and they texted me and said, hey, do you need help? Do you need to come and stay with us? And I was like, no, I think I'm okay. I'll try it tonight on my own. Well, I knew I'd sleep a lot better in my bed, which was uh, another floor up, and my shower and bathroom and everything, you know, all my stuff was up there. So I left the scooter on the main level and crawled with my <laughs> one good arm and one good leg, kind of, I don't know, sometimes I would go forward without getting a bloody knee on the carpet, and then other times I'd go backwards. But I got up to that level, but then standing from there, again, was very hard and excruciating just to get into the bed. And then I was like, well, now I need to go to the bathroom, and how do I do that? So I ended up doing a lot of crying that night in pain and just feeling sorry for myself and lonely. And so the next morning, I called my uncle, my mom's brother, Bill, and said, I'm going to need help. Um, I'm going to need to come stay with you. So he drove out and loaded the scooter in his truck and the shower stool in his truck and watered my plants for me, packed my bag for me, including my underwear, which was very humbling, and <laughs> packed it all in his car and helped me get down the stairs and took me to their house. And um, that was a picture of me on their couch propping up my foot in their living room where I was for a week and a half um, and they would carry the scooter up the stairs for me at night so that I could get between the guest bedroom and the bathroom and down the stairs for me in the morning. And they'd put the shower stool in and out of their shower for me so I could use that. My aunt would constantly bring me fresh ice packs for my ankle. They made me really good food and even did my laundry for me. And I was blessed to be able to have them. Um, others reached out too. Thank you, Debbie, for the rides and the meal. And um, the UPC prayer teams were praying for me. I just had someone come up last week. She was like, oh, you're Jill. Oh, I was praying for you and for healing. <laughs> and so people I don't even know um, covering me in prayer. So thank you for that. I'm going through physical therapy on my ankle now, but you can see it's getting much better. Um, it is sore today because of all the work the PT had me do, but praise God, it's getting better. But we live in a time and place that puts a very high value on independence. I put a high value on my independence and my self-sufficiency. Reaching out for help can feel weak or even embarrassing. Letting people in to see my dirty laundry literally and figuratively was hard and required a setting aside of some of my pride. I'm sure some of you can also relate to not wanting to be a burden on another person or get in the way of someone's plans. We talk a lot in church about loving and serving and caring for others, and that is incredibly important, and we will talk about that today too. But it's also important that we be able to open ourselves up to receive help and care and prayer from others. And that can feel really vulnerable. In our passage today, Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. And I can relate to Peter in this passage. The scene takes place on the night of the Last Supper, when Jesus and his disciples are gathered to share the Passover meal together. Before Jesus breaks the bread and says, this is my body broken for you, or pours the wine and says, this is my blood shed for you. And the disciples don't know what he means yet. After that, Jesus will take some of them with him while he prays in the garden. It's the most stressed and burdened that we see Jesus because he knows he's about to be tortured and is going to die, and his friends keep falling asleep. It is in that garden where he's betrayed and arrested. I'll be reading 
from John chapter 13, and it's a long passage, so I'll go ahead and read it, but if you want to follow along, please look at the screens or in the Pew Bibles. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. This is the word of the Lord. In this passage, Jesus humbles himself to the job and posture of a servant. He lowers himself in status and stature. The disciples would have worn sandals and walked on dusty roads earlier in the day. Their feet would have been caked with grime and dirt. Jesus, wrapping himself in a towel, lowers himself physically and kneels down. He dives his hands into the water, and some of the dirt and grime would have gotten on him in the process of washing. This reminds me of the time that Jesus entered the graveyard with a demon-possessed man and healed him. Or when he touched those who would have been considered unclean with diseases or sin and heals them. Peter says, don't wash me. I can relate to Peter here and maybe some of you can too um, in more ways than one. Well, when I was on a mission trip in high school, we joined together with another church. So there were two youth groups doing a mission trip together, and um, we wore sandals outside, tromping through dirt and forest. And that evening, the youth pastor surprised us by saying we were going to randomly be assigned to wash one another's feet. And I was assigned to wash and receive washing from a high school boy from the other church who I didn't know and who I thought was kind of cute. And it was very awkward and vulnerable uh, to receive that washing. He got in between all of my toes and he really went to down on it. Um, But if that was vulnerable, how much harder would it have been for Peter to allow his rabbi and teacher and Lord to wash his grimy feet? And how much harder is it for us to allow Jesus to get in there and really clean the dirt and grime out of our lives? Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. We don't need to clean ourselves up before we approach Jesus. He wants us as we are. Jesus even washes Judas's feet, the one who would betray him later that night. No one is too dirty or unclean or sinful to be washed by Christ. 
He knows the dirty parts of us already anyway. He will clean us and forgive us. His blood and sacrifice will cleanse us. We need to allow Jesus to wash our souls, S-O-L-E-S, and ask him to cleanse our souls, S-O-U-L-S. Judas received the foot washing, but he wouldn't receive the soul washing. After Jesus washes the disciples' feet, has the Passover meal, and gets betrayed and arrested, this happened the next day from John 19, 1 through 3. It says, Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Jesus was mocked and tormented in the midst of being physically tortured. He never struck back or said a bad word against the mockers. He even asked God the Father to forgive them before he breathes his last breath. Jesus is different than every other king, emperor, prime minister, president, or person with authority that we can think of. Our king wasn't wealthy. He didn't live in a castle or have high status. He shared a table with sinners and betrayers and prostitutes and tax collectors. He died a criminal's death on a wooden cross wearing a crown of thorns beneath a sign that mocked his kingship. But our king is the one whose death healed humanity's relationship with our maker. Jesus' death and resurrection means we can be washed clean by his blood, the blood of the perfect, spotless, sinless lamb. We can receive grace upon grace upon grace and, and can freely approach the throne of God no matter how dirty and sinful we are. Because once we proclaim that Jesus is our king and savior, God sees sons and daughters when he looks at us. I'm reminded of a song here, and I am not a singer, so I'm going to need you to sing along with me, just a verse and a chorus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Good job. Amen. D.A. Carson, in his commentary, The Gospel According to John, writes, As with the crucifixion, so with the foot washing, each is simultaneously an act of God by which human beings are freed or cleansed, whether in reality, the cross, or in symbol, the foot washing, and an example that Jesus' followers are to emulate. Jesus tells us to follow his example and wash one another's feet. My aunt and uncle and coworkers and friends did that for me after my fall. And here's another example. This last winter, I knew that I was going to need to have a surgical procedure done, and I got it scheduled with my doctor for early April. At one appointment, my OBGYN explained in more detail about the surgery, and it turned out that it was going to be more invasive and a bigger deal than I'd expected. She said I wouldn't be able to drive for a week and that I would need somebody to come and stay with me. When I got into my car right after that appointment, I burst into tears. I missed my mom so much and wished that I can call her and ask her to come and stay with me and take care of me. And I know that without a second thought, she would have done it. I missed my dad, too, knowing he would have been next on the list. In years past, he'd already spent some time on an air mattress in my living room when he helped me move here and when he came to visit. 
I didn't really want to ask anybody else. I wasn't sure who I'd feel comfortable being that vulnerable in front of. And um, I was kind of thinking through a cousin or a friend, knowing they had full-time jobs and other responsibilities. Well, I called my brother later that day because I knew he'd understand missing our parents. And I didn't even consider asking him to leave his family or take time off work and fly up here, but he offered immediately. When I tried to say no and that I'd find someone else, he said, Jill, this is what we do for each other. And that was that. I knew that I would do the same for him. Chad and I are bonded not only because of genetics, but because of the two hospital rooms we spent time in with our dying parents. We have a bond beyond our genes. So I received his help, and he was a good nurse. He drove me to and from the surgery. He listened to the surgeon. He was forced to look at photos of my insides. Uh, he set timers for my medications. He did grocery runs. He made food, and he was good company. Well, church, we are forever bonded because of the blood of Jesus. In John's gospel, after he is resurrected, Jesus refers to the disciples as brothers. Before that, he refers to them as friends, servants, disciples. But after sin and death are conquered and the curtain of the temple is torn in two, Jesus calls them family. Because of the cross and the resurrection, we can be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are brothers and sisters, and we are told to wash each other's feet, to forgive one another, and to carry each other's burdens. Church, this is what we do for each other. That means not only being the ones to help others, but being the ones to humble ourselves and ask for help and receive care as well. Well, this morning, I have three questions for us to consider this week and some takeaways. So would you take out your phone and open up the Notes app or write in the margins of your bulletin, or if maybe you brought a journal and you could write these three things down. Question number one, how do you need to receive help or prayer from someone this week? Maybe you would really like somebody to go with you to a doctor's appointment that you have coming up, and you've been too shy or embarrassed to ask. You can write that down and reach out to somebody. Put yourself out there. Open yourself up vulnerably to somebody. Maybe you are new to Seattle, and you don't know very many people yet, and when you moved here... Maybe you're a young adult or a college student. You had some family that said, oh, I know someone who lives in Seattle, and maybe it's time that you reach out to that person and connect and get coffee with them. Maybe you need something that our deacons could provide, like a handy scooter or a walker or some prayer. Um, you can reach out to the deacons by emailing suebb at upc.org. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what you could use help with. Question two. To whom could you reach out to to offer help or an invitation? Maybe you can think of somebody who might be feeling lonely during the holidays and you can invite them to join your table. Maybe you can think of someone that you should call this week or send a card to or a text to check in on them. Maybe there's another way that you could reach out to someone in your life that you've been maybe putting off or meaning to do or haven't gotten around to yet. You could type that in. And question three, how do you need to submit to Jesus today? How have you been like Peter, pushing Jesus' cleansing away? Do you need to receive care, hope, companionship, or love from Jesus? Do you need to confess your lack of submission to his authority, his voice, 
his leading, or your pride in not accepting his help or grace. Let's pray. Thank you, King Jesus, for your model of humility and servanthood to each of us. Let us set aside our pride and reach out for help and to love and serve one another. Thank you, Lord, for your power and your conquering of sin and death. May we receive your cleansing, your forgiveness, and your grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Wow. Jill, thank you. Feels like we need to take a moment, doesn't it? And just allow the truth of what we've heard to sink in and allow us time to respond to it. And so I want to invite us as we sing this next song, we're just going to remain seated. If you want to sing, sing. If you just need some time to pray, take the time to pray. After the service, we'll have people up front that would be happy, overjoyed to pray with you, no matter what the need. Um, especially if you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time, to put your trust and faith in him. But for any reason, you can come up and ask for prayer. But uh, right now as we sing this song of surrender, I want to invite you just to, to sing with me or to pray. Spirit of the living God. It's in number 297 in our hymnals. join me for prayers of the people. Father, we thank you for the message today. We thank you for the messenger. Uh, we thank you for her vulnerability, and we thank you, dear God, for using her, Lord, to speak incisively into our lives today. And Lord, may we not only be hearers of your word, but also doers that we may be blessed in all that we do according to your will, Lord. And Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace this morning, knowing that we have a great high priest that could sympathize with all that we could ever go through, dear God. Lord, we know you to be a God who gives grace to the humble, 
but you resist the proud. And Lord, may we ever be, forever be in a perpetual position of humility that we will receive your grace, dear God. And Lord, not only do we need you today, but we need one another. For you have called us to be your hands and your feet for such a time as this, Lord. So, Lord, we pray that you would instill in us to be people after your own heart, to love the things that you love, to hate the things that you hate, and to be concerned about the things that you're concerned about. And help us, Lord, to serve from a heart of compassion. With that being said, Lord, we pray for Jane, who has moved into hospice care for God's comfort and presence and peace, Lord. We pray that you would make your presence known in her life, Lord, and and just pray for her and her family, Lord God, and may we as a church uh, be quick to help, Lord God. Uh, We continue to pray for those who are facing health challenges, surgery in our church family. We pray for Cindy recovering from surgery. We lift up Don and Scott and Laurel and Linda. And Lord, we just pray that you would make your presence known in each and every one of their lives, Lord. And Lord, I know that there are others under the sound of my voice, Lord God, who have unspoken concerns. And we pray, Lord God, that you would make your presence known in their lives, Lord, and may they not live um, in loneliness or in isolation, but that they know that they have a brother or sister in Christ that's ready and willing to help. Lord, melt our hearts, warm our hearts, dear God, and help us, Lord, to be people after your own heart and have compassion. Lord, we pray for the wars and rumors of wars, dear God. We pray for our Palestinian brothers and sisters and our Jewish brothers and sisters, dear God. Lord, we know that you're the only one that can bring peace between them, Lord God. You're the only one, dear God, for you have already broken down the wall of hostility between them, all they need to do is accept it. You have already broken down the walls of hostility between us, Lord God. So, Lord God, we pray for those who have gotten caught in a crossfire, children, elderly. And, Lord, we just pray that you would make your presence known, Lord, and that they would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. There's no politician that can solve the problems. There's no leader that can solve the problem. Only our humble King, Jesus Christ, can do it. So, Lord God, we look to you. For we don't have the answers, Lord, but we look to you, Lord, for you know For the king's heart is in your hands, like the rivers of water, and you can turn it whithersoever you will. And Lord, we ask that you will teach us how to pray, as you taught your disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It has been so good to be together in God's house and to be worshiping him with our sisters and brothers. I hope that you've been refreshed. I know that I have. And now it's time for us to go and to do what God calls us to do. 
not in our own strength, not out of our own pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, but by the power of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. And so I want to invite us to stand. We're going to sing together hymn number 670, Rise Up, O Saints of God. Well, thank you again for worshiping with us today. Um, and thank you for your generous giving this season. It means so much uh, to keep this ministry active and alive. I want to invite our prayer teams forward. Um, both Jill and Dave have named that I, we have a prayer team that is happy and ready to pray with you um, after the service. So if those folks would come on forward and get ready, um, they would love to pray with you. Because that's what we do for one another, isn't it? A couple of announcements. If you're a college student, we have a brunch following our second service. So at noon, um, come to the Palmer House for a wonderful uh, meal. Next Sunday, our Boy Scouts will be selling wreaths. And so if you want a beautiful Christmas wreath, you can pre-order one. Um, you can find that on our website or you can um, hope there's a little bit of inventory left and you can grab one next Sunday. Following this service, um, I'd like to invite you to the welcome table in the narthex where you can sign up to be involved in our Kindred Christmas. Um, we are supporting uh, families throughout Seattle and Redmond and need your help to buy gifts, um, to be the hands and feet so that um, a number of families um, in need might be able to supply Christmas presents and food for their family during the holiday season. So come to the welcome table after this service to sign up. And then you are all invited to warm up with some warm or hot coffee and tea upstairs in Geneva. So um, please join us for that. Well, Jill, thank you so much um, for, um, yeah, I think that's appropriate. Uh, we, you, what a great reminder um, of ways that we can be um, available to one another. Would you give us the benediction this morning? Sure. John 13, 34 through 35 says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So church, may, be, may we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, loving and forgiving one another. Open ourselves up to the cleansing of our Christ Jesus and live in sons and daughters of our loving creator. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us at University Presbyterian Church. It is such a joy to be with you online and to know you're a part of this church family as God calls us to go next door and to love our neighbors. This week, remember, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, God is making his appeal through us. Isn't that amazing? Well, listen, take care, have a great week, and we look forward to being with you again next week. Music